Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show how to import a camera from Moto into Unreal 4 which is something that I've always had problems with in the past even though it's not something that I normally do it's something that I always thought would be kind of cool to you know play with especially if you're trying to do some sort of like animations in Moto and you know and then you want to render that stuff out in real time you, you in real four is pretty good for that so i figure that this time around i could you know put more time into trying to figure out how to do it so i want to share my my uh, you know my findings with everybody you know maybe someone else can tell me that i did it all wrong and show me a better way but you know <laughs> i think that we all live and learn so anyways let me show you what I have. Um, here's Moto, and the Moto I have a scene that has um, a camera called a camera animated, right? So camera animated kind of just flies through this very simple environment that I created. Okay, so camera animated has two keyframes, you know, keyframe zero and thirty. And it just goes back and forth, you know, it's nothing fancy. There's no crazy script or anything that makes it shake or anything. It's just right now I just want to see if I can bring that camera into into a reel. I also have this dummy object here that I guess you could say is it serves sort of a pickup item or, you know, a skeletal mesh or whatever, but I mean a uh, character but it is a skeletal mesh so what it's what it's made of is it's a mesh that has been bound uh, rigid bound to uh, you know to a skeleton so if I move the skeleton should be able to do it you know and you know and then all I did was put some keyframes in it so it kind of just moves right so the way to export this stuff is by simply going to make a new scene and make sure that the scene is completely empty. You know, and you can delete the stuff by hand. So if you hold Control N and just select all the objects in the scene, you know, and n that nukes that scene out, and then you really uh, should be able to just drag and drop whatever you did into it right and then just hit export as and save your scene I mean save your camera as uh, as camera animated um, I say the most important thing here is you have to save it as an FBX you know I don't know if it works out with other file formats but I, you know this is how I got it to come in so and also it doesn't have to be named camera animator you can name it whatever you want I was just testing stuff out you know don't pay attention to my names so it's the same thing with the animator object except that that guy is a little bit bit more um, confusing because there's two things you need to export you need to export these two guys and unfortunately Moto doesn't have an export production so what you have to do is do a new scene again and drag and drop it into it export that out so grab these two guys put that in there and export you know and save it save it as whatever you know I, I saved it as animator object so that's it for moto you know it's very simple stuff the other stuff that I had in the scene um, was this ground here which is basically my way to check in the position in everything um, so one thing I wanted to know too is that um, and Moto, Moto is a YAP word whereas um, Unreal is a ZAP word but the one thing that they do have in common is that X always points to a side you know so if you go to uh, if I go if I jump into Unreal I have the same scene that I had in Moto already you know, I have the, the the ground plane with the cube and the cylinder and I have the skeleton mesh that I already imported. Now the way to import the skeleton mesh 
is is that you basically want to do once once you once you export the staff out, you'll say animated object. And for this, I'm going to say yes all. And what I did is I set skeletal mesh in here and import animations, and then um, I told it to import the rigid mesh. And so far, I've done that and it worked. So I'm I'm not sure if that's how you should be doing it, but you know, for this specific case, that's how I got it to work. Okay, so um, the next thing you should do, the next thing you should know, I'm sorry, is that if you double click on this guy in here and go to animation, you should be able to click and preview your animation. So, see, that's the animation that I had in Moto. Right? So, so far, everything's working um, like I want it to. So, to set up the camera, what you need to do is create a matinee object. So, add new matinee. And then, well, first of all, let's do, let's bring in the camera. So, file, import, camera, animate it. Say yes. And if you click on this guy, you should it should select the camera then here, so you should see it. You know, if I scrub through the timeline, you see it. Now the problem with that is, you s the camera didn't come in at the same position as it did in Moto. In Moto, it was in the front, and here's on the side. Let's see, so it's a huge problem because. The camera is already it's animating like it's supposed to be, but it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm pretty sure that there's many ways to do that. You know, you could you could you know, create a script or you know do some voodoo magic in Moto. I don't know, but I actually it it just occurred to me that right now I needed the camera to be right here. So just by luck, I was like, okay. Maybe what I could do is I could make a cube, a simple cube, in Moto, and I input a static mesh. See, it's just a simple cube, and then I, re I reset the translations of it, and then all I did then is uh, let me rename this guy first. Name it um, Camera Pivot. And I had another camera pivot in there before. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the new one that I made because I want you to see something. So now, every time I click on this camera, it kind of shows you where, where it's looking at. So if I go to camera pivot and change the rotation on the C axis on, on 90. Now you will see that it now it's pointing the way that we want it to point, which is which is cool because very quickly you can fix that error by just doing that. And then the next thing will be the camera pivot to go then here and say visible and just uncheck that. And now you you won't see it when when you go in the game, or if you want to you can just keep it visible. But you can tell it to uh, the actor should be hidden when you go in the game, right? So that's all good. So now if I scroll up through the timeline uh, and click on the camera, see you should see the camera moving down there, which is cool. Um, so the next thing it will be to you know make that this little guy move with it so if you select the guy in the scene not not in the browser but in the actual scene and go here and say skeletal group and name it dummy I mean really you can name it whatever you want but that's what I name it so go to anim then at key and select your animation set so now if I screw through <coughs> if I scrub through I should see that it's you know, it's moving the camera and the stuff, so, you know, so everything's working. Now, if 
if I had play though, it nothing's really gonna happen because we haven't really specified much yet. We haven't really told it. Uh, we haven't really told him real that we need to look through that camera or anything like that. So first thing I want to do is I want to change this magnet actor four to just cinematic. And again, you can name it whatever you want, but open cinematic. So the way it works is you need to create a director group. So once that's set, set add key, and then it's going to ask you what is it you want to do. So just make sure that you set the camera. Right, so once you do that, you should be able to um, create a blueprint that pretty much activates that camera on on the event begin play, or if you have a collision object or a trigger, you know you can you can swap it out for that. Uh, for this specific thing, though, I just want it to play when I when I hit the play button. Right, so I'm gonna compile this again and hit play, and it happens super fast. But you can kind of see that this stuff is actually working. So I hope this is helpful for. Uh, I mean, I hope I hope that this is helpful for a lot of people. And I 